Welcome to the Long Thread Podcast about spinning, stitching, and weaving by hand. The podcast is presented by Long Thread Media, publishers of Spinoff, Handwoven, Piecework, and Little Looms magazines. Find us online at longthreadmedia.com. This episode is sponsored by handweaving.net, the comprehensive weaving website with more than 75,000 historic and modern weaving drafts, documents, and powerful digital tools that put creativity in your hands. Now it's simple to design, color, update, and save your drafts. Handweaving.net's mission is to preserve the rich heritage of handweaving and pass it down to you. Visit handweaving.net and sign up for a subscription today. This episode is sponsored by Trainway Silks. You'll find the largest variety of silk spinning fibers, silk yarn, and silk threads and ribbons at trainwaysilks.com. Choose from a rainbow of hand-dyed colors. Love natural? Their array of wild silk and silk blends provide choices beyond white. Trainway Silks, where superior quality and customer service are guaranteed. I'm your host, Long Thread Media co-founder, Anne Merrow. I'm here at the spinoff Autumn Retreat, which is in Delavan, Wisconsin this year. And I'm sitting down with Marsha Young, who is the founder of Fiber Art Now magazine. But about a year ago, Marsha, you joined Schiffer Publishing. Is that right? I did. And I'm so excited to start this new chapter and be a part of this exciting company. And it's not just a company, you know, it's um, a community that supports makers and making across all the mediums, all the craft mediums. Yeah. Yeah. And you're one of the things we've been excited to get a peek at here is that you had a preview of Karen Selk's new book, In Search of Wild Silk. And Karen was a guest on a previous season. Mm -hmm. And I also got a peek at my first hard copy of Keith Recker's book, True Colors, Mm. in your booth. Because I see a lot of digital proofs, but Mm. having something that you can actually look at in the booth is just, you can't beat that. Yeah. You know, we're so excited about Karen's new title. And um, I actually just listened to her podcast um, the other day on my way here, which was really exciting. And so her book is out. And, you know, even listening to her keynote speech the other night, I've read the book and I'm really familiar with it. But just the inspirational stories of all of her travels for 30 more or more years, learning really about all kinds of silk. And, um, you know, it just is so inspirational. So it's not only a book about knowledge and learning about the silks of India and everything, but it's really these inspirational backstories and the passion she has behind it. So that's exciting. And um, True Colors, yeah, Keith Rackers, one of his latest books, that's also a beautiful, beautiful publication. I always say that, you know, people can learn something quickly on YouTube or maybe on a website, but really what we offer and I'm not trying to give it a hard sell. I'm just saying at Schiffer Craft, what we want to provide is something of quality that people cherish. And the object itself is something that they want in their home. And I think with those two titles and with the others, we've accomplished that, you know, made something beautiful. You know, I've been actually noticing a lot of great books coming out of Schiffer the last couple of years. Schiffer's always had a few craft books here and there, but from, you know, the the threads, the textiles A to Z mm-hmm. to just all kinds of really exciting new, I mean, of course, I love the textile one the <laughs> right. best, but there's a whole breadth of them. Right. As you know, I'm, I'm completely a textile fiber art junkie, as you know, for many, many years. And I still have that at my core. And now I get to explore uh, all the other mediums as well. And just a couple of years ago, um, shortly before I joined, Schiffer Publishing split craft off and gave it its own imprint. So that means that Schiffer has decided to invest in craft. And we really are committed, you know, to the craft community. And we all know that makers and crafters are passionate and we gain meaning and enrich our lives through what we make with our hands. And Schiffer Craft wants to be a part of that for everyone in our community. 
So whether we're shepherding people with a weaving book or even people who are just starting ceramics or they are further along in their journey with whatever medium, if it's woodworking or bladesmithing or, you know, today we're here at this wonderful uh, conference, SOAR, on this gorgeous lake in Wisconsin. And I'm from Wisconsin and Minnesota. So oh, really? I you know, give me a lake anytime. I just feel at home. And it's been just such a lovely time. And what I always say is, and it's true, is that every community I go to, there's sort of a vibe for that community, which I think grows directly out of the skills and the creativity unique to that medium. And I love them all, and the weaving and spinning community is just one of those. So it's really been. Oh, I was thought wonderful. I thought you were going to say that we were secretly your favorite. And the weaving and spinning <laughs> community is secretly my favorite, just between the two of us, and <laughs> just us, you know, here in this secret podcast. I'll tell you, it's my favorite. <laughs> no, but yeah. you know, I think people often forget that paper is actually a textile craft. That's right. Yes, like paper and paper making. Uh Yes, and we are even looking into things like, um, I don't know if you've heard of Shifu, which is... Yes, Spinoff Magazine had a piece about it. And one of our weavers actually said, hey, I'm really inspired by this. Can I make a paper towel? By which he meant, can I cut up paper, spin yarn, and weave a towel out of it? Oh, okay. It's crazy. Yes, it's Korean. And as you know, um, Mm. the Korean fiber arts are really... I mean, they give me the chills just thinking about it. As a matter of fact, a few years back, I went to Seoul and I spoke at the Korean Bojagi Conference. And that was only the beginning for me of understanding, gaining a greater understanding of all the Korean fine crafts. And Shifu now, just look for it in the future, <laughs> because we've got that in mind, as well as some other really exciting things that are coming down the line. And talk is cheap, so I shouldn't talk things up too much before they are coming out. But at the same time, things like more and more interesting um, products related to natural dyeing. Mm -hmm. Uh, For example, The Art and Science of Natural Dyes by Catherine Ellis and Joy Boutrop has been sort of a runaway hit for us. And we just are sending into production a new product related to that, which is actually a kit. Well, I shouldn't say a kit. It's a recipe box that it's this gorgeous box that has cards in it, which even have uh, fabric swatches that are completely color matched. And you pull them out each one and you can put your own notes on the back. I mean, it's just the most precious thing. So that's one. I shouldn't (laughs) talk so early about these things, but it's hard not to because they're all very exciting. Uh, Something more coming by Tommy Scanlon. We have just a lot of things coming up in this weaving, spinning, fiber art space, um, as well as across the mediums. So yeah, I'm just, I'm all about it, as you can imagine. (laughs) And it's not that much of a secret, because I talked to Catherine Ellis recently, Uh and she told me that she was working on this. Yes. Yes. So, and she has been taking, she created her own box mock-up, and Mm -hmm. has been taking it around showing people. So she's really getting the buzz going, and uh, that's very exciting. So that's just one of the things, but um, we have several things coming down the down the pike that we're really excited about. And not to be too gushy about it, but to me, they're not just products or even just books. They're really a way to connect with what you love and what you what creates meaning and enriches your life. And we're, you know, humbled to be a part of that for people. Mm-hmm. So it's not for us at Schiffer, it's not just about a new pattern book that you could grab and go. It's really, of course, the how-to and, of course, the projects, etc. but also the delicious imagery and the connection with the people who write the books, who, as you know, are the people who lead these, I don't even want to call them mediums, because they lead these areas of fine craft for us that are, we all admire them so much. And so it's a lot more to me and I know to Schiffer Craft and our team mm-hmm. than just grabbing a book at the local whatever chain, you know. Well, and yeah. one of the things we've found that I know you guys have found too mm-hmm. is that, you know, the the death of print has been greatly exaggerated, which is not to say mm-hmm. that, you know, there isn't a transition going on right. in the media world. Mm-hmm. But it, it to us, you know, one of the things that my partner John Bolton first did when we started Long Thread Media was to say, 
it's not even a question. We're going to start printing on better paper. Right. It's an experience yes. is what we want people to have. It's higher quality is what it is. And it's it's an investment in, like, like we believe that this is worth keeping. Mm-hmm. So it's an investment in that. And also, we are people who make things and touch things with our hands. Yes. So, like, it should be something that you like to touch. We're tactile. Yeah. And... Um, we do get a lot of papers we don't care about, mm-hmm. but these are the kinds of things we do care about, right? That yeah. we do want in our shelf and in our living room. And Schiffer Craft is, wants to be those things for people. Mm-hmm. We don't need to give you 10 more steps to 50 more things, which you could find somewhere else online or mm-hmm. something like that. Um, but we love, obviously, we love YouTube, Instagram, everything. And all of those mediums work together along with, you know, supporting and spreading the word about these gems that we we hope that people feel they're gems that we're making, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's something that for the for hand woven and spin off, we were at Convergence this summer mm-hmm. and I know you were too. You yeah. guys were I didn't even get a chance to speak yeah. to you. You guys were so busy. <laughs> but I can't tell you how many people stopped by and said, Oh, I've had every issue back to the beginning. Yes. And there's this thought that magazines and newspapers that just recycled tomorrow. They're mm-hmm. they're wrapping the fish tomorrow. But right. it's Having something in your hands that you will want that knowledge forever. It's its a big commitment to developing that kind of thing, too. Like, not it just is. the paper, but what goes on it. Yeah. No, I don't buy that idea that it's all going away. Of course not. And now, obviously, you're you are working on developing Schiffer Crafts mm-hmm. list. But working with artists is something that you have been doing consistently for, for your career. Yes. So I don't know how far back we want to go, but... <laughs> You know, I was talking, uh, this is sort of a sidebar story, but I was talking with someone here at SOAR. And of course, one of the many benefits of coming here and to events like this is just being able to chat with people, you know. But anyway, I was talking with uh, somebody the other day about how when I was a a kid, my sister, who lived way out in Montana when I grew up in Minnesota, whenever I would visit her, she'd think of something exciting for us to do together. And one year... We took horses up into the mountains, and I'm not kidding you, we went to this Native American grandma, and she taught us how to make porcupine quill earrings. She couldn't even speak English, and we just sat there with her for the afternoon. Oh, wow. And then we took her, got back on the horses and went back down, and then another year, same sister, she was living in North Carolina at the time, and she had a friend who was a textile designer. And I was able to go to a photo shoot for, it was fabric design for all children's fabrics. So it was a whole crib setting and child's room and everything. And I think back to those things and think how um, how would I have known things would have kind of all come together anyway. So that's going way back. But uh, most recently uh, in the last 10 to 15 years, I started Fiber Art Now magazine and the Fiber Art Network. And the reason I did that, and I'll give you just a very short story, um, is just that I started a blog for my um, quilt guild out in Western Mass. Because, you know, you go to the quilt show or whatever show, and you get to see the things for those two days, and then you couldn't see them anymore, and they didn't really have a site. So it was called Valley Fiber Life, which was the Pioneer Valley out in Western Mass. And um, I just started that. And then it was only the first few posts that were about the Pioneer Valley. And then it just expanded and expanded. And then I got a bigger and bigger audience. And um, there was a fiber arts center in our town that closed. And they gave me their email list. So I started emailing out. And, you know, one thing led to another. And then people were asking me, like, what are you going to do with this? I mean, you must have a plan. And, of course, I had no plan except to keep going. (laughs) And I had little kids at the time. And I remember just sitting up in the middle of the night had to write the next post. I had to, you know, I don't know why I felt so like possessed of this thing, but that's how that started. And then at some point, Fiber Arts Magazine, which has, as you know, a very well-respected long legacy, the publisher that purchased it decided to cease publication. And when I saw that that day on Facebook, I decided to make a magazine right then. And I knew I had to do it quickly because the larger publishers or any, I wasn't a publisher at all at the time, but I knew it would take them a little more time to sort of, you know, turn and make something. So that was in June. And then by October, we had our first issue out. But I have to say, qualify that by saying, I never share the first issue because I mean, it was pretty rough. (laughs) And it was like a print on demand. Mm -hmm. Basically, the amount it cost me to print and ship is what I charged people. 
Wow. Because that's that's what I could do. Yeah. And then that's how that started. It just kept growing. Over the 10 years, it was so many adventures and different mm -hmm. things. I can't even encapsulate it all. But ultimately, Quilt Folk purchased it mm -hmm. this last fall, almost a year ago now. And they've made it into something even much better. More of a bookazine, mm -hmm. you know, 100 pages or something. And um, all of my staff, who I'm sure a lot of people listening to this have become familiar with online because they've all mostly been there right. for many years. They all are still there. And, you know, I yeah. just, I'm, I guess basically what I'm saying is I'm just so grateful because I was ready to move on to something more and different mm -hmm. and to have it gain a new, better life in a new way. And for me to be able to explore this with Schiffer Publishing is just, I mean, I can't tell you, it's such a gift. And um, we've got a lot of exciting things coming up. Actually, that story sounds a lot like Linda Ligon's story. I don't know whether you've talked to her about it, but Interweave magazine started off as something that she started at her kitchen table when uh -huh. she had little kids at home. And it started off as a fiber magazine for the Mountain West. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of grew and evolved from there. You know, it's interesting. So you've gone from fiber art now to Schiffer Craft. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, you know, there's always this kind of question are we an art or a craft and i know oh. some of our some of our fiber pursuits are feel much more comfortable with one than the other mm -hmm. this is a provocative provocative subject mm -hmm. <laughs> asking you to weigh in oh, on sure yeah no i mean of course that's <laughs> yeah. been part of my ongoing conversations for sure, many yeah. years i don't really see a dichotomy myself so mm -hmm. with fiber art now we were in both i guess all worlds or i think of it as a spectrum mm -hmm. <laughs> so of course, we had things such as projects that were submissions that went on to museums. Mm -hmm. But how many of us really are are making art to go into museums? Mm -hmm. We aren't, or even galleries necessarily. That's only a small percentage. Right. I'd like to think, though, that almost all of us are inspired by and interested in seeing mm -hmm. work across the spectrum. I know that for fiber in particular across all the fiber mediums, and I was just talking with someone at dinner last night about mm -hmm. this, that fiber artists are all inspired by other mediums. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so maybe I'm not a dyer. I might take one dyeing class so I can figure that out mm -hmm. and meet the dyers and get that vibe. But it doesn't mean I'm going to switch off of being mostly a spinner or whatever it happens to be. And I feel the same way across all the craft mediums. Mm -hmm. We are so enamored of each other. Mm -hmm. um, I was at the Smithsonian Craft Show in April in Washington, D.C. I mean, that's one of the big things. Yeah. <laughs> kind of joining Schiffer, that I'm able to see things like that and walk around, you know, mm -hmm. and see what people are making across all these mediums. And, you know, they're all inspired by one another. Uh, so whatever your vibe is, if you feel like you're more of a craft person or more of an art person, the bottom line is we're all makers and we're all making with our hands. And that's, to me, where I derive meaning even in my own life. So I don't, I'm not trying to dodge the question. I just feel like... <laughs> But I don't most, think about, yeah. But most of us don't like the word hobby quite as much. It's oh, no. <laughs> hard to think about when you're writing, when, when you have to mm. write about this whole collection mm. and you said, okay, well, I've said arts now three times and oh, I've said craft okay. four times and you can't, yeah. boy, but you can't default don't to hobby. <laughs> Hobbies feels patronizing to me yeah. because I think, well, for example, my husband is an avid golfer, especially, mm -hmm. especially recently. He's been able to take a little more time and, you know, he goes out there and I think it's really about being in this quiet space mm -hmm. and he doesn't necessarily care if he has a good game or not but i don't think he would say to me i derive meaning from golfing it really is a hobby because it's yeah. it's a something he does to mm -hmm. relax and he gets to sometimes go out with his friends honestly and i don't mean to overstate mm -hmm. making but right. i know that people we all derive meaning from what we make with our hands yeah so to me that's different very yeah. different, you know? It is kind of it is kind of primal, you know, and actually we we sort of are are made to make things. Yes, we are. But it also connects with something else that I know that you are passionate about, which is interacting with the natural world. You know, it's we we are meant to take to take something which at some point goes back to the natural world, right. you know, whether it's from a sheep or or right. even, you know, some sort of process, mm -hmm. but to take something and transform it into something else. And you're working on a book about that. I am. Um, Schiffer signed me to write this book when I was still with Fiber Art Now, and I had no idea that life would turn this way. Right. And now the book is being released soon. It's called Create Naturally. 
And it's all about gaining inspiration for your work from nature and or actually using nature and natural elements in your work. So Mm -hmm. I took 15 artists whose work I really relate to across all mediums. Of course, it's sort of fiber heavy because I happen to be in that world. But out of 15, maybe there are eight or nine um, that are related to fiber and interviewed each of them in a really, I like to think of it as an sort of an intimate way because they are speaking to the reader directly Mm -hmm. about how they either are inspired by nature or what they do to explore nature through their work. And let's face it, as you said, nature is what we go back to, to find ourselves, Mm -hmm. uh, two words, you know. And honestly, in the introduction in the book, I wrote about how over all these years, People often would say to me, oh, I'm inspired by nature. And it would always sound sort of flippant and maybe a little trite. And I wanted to explore that in a real and honest way and not a sort of Hallmark Disney way. Like, And so I hope that accomplished that. And these, the talks, each chapter is maybe seven or eight pages. And the end of it has a go outside section, mm-hmm. which is advice directly from that artist about what you can do to do the kinds of things they do. So one uh, quilt artist I'm thinking of is Lorraine Roy, and she's actually got a background in biology. And she worked with Suzanne Samard, who is a New York Times bestselling author and, get this, an archaeological dendrologist. And I'll just tell you what that is, which is she can study the rings of trees and tell you the environment that was happening like 100 years ago or more. And her discoveries about how um, the forest is really a collaborative environment and not a dog-eat-dog survival of the fittest environment just rocked my world. And so uh, anyway, I'm digressing, but Lorraine Roy is one of those people. And she was able to go to Dr. Samard's lab and find out about things like, I'm going to tell you a little story that is going to just still drives me nuts because it's so amazing, which is They can find out that, for example, the kinds of fish that were and salmon that were in the stream like 150 years ago because the bears would grab the salmon, chuck them off to the side and eat the salmon and leave the carcass there. And then the tree absorbs all of those nutrients and everything from the salmon carcass. And then we can now, Dr. Suzanne Samard, can read that and see what the environment was. Um, Another really mind-blowing thing is the whole forest as one being, basically one organism, because there's, have you ever gone out into the woods and there's this thick layer before you can get down into the soil? Mm -hmm. That's all web of fungi and they're connecting all of the trees. And so there are messages going from these huge trees to the little trees and the, the large trees share nitrogen with baby trees through fungus. Wow. So... I mean, it honestly, it gives me the chills. Uh And these are the kinds of things that I talk about in the book, these little stories of awe Mm -hmm. and how artists and makers take these things and express them visually by making with their hands. You know, another woman is a nature sketchbook artist. And one thing she told me, there's so many things I could tell you, so many stories about each of these amazing, interesting people. But one thing that sticks out for her is that she says, I don't want people to think about becoming a better artist. I want them instead to become a better observer of their life around them. So just even, she says, open up a little sketchbook and write numbers. Like what's the date? What's the temperature? Start with that. Mm -hmm. Then she says, look at the clouds. Can you draw that cloud? Mm -hmm. Because if you hadn't done that, you wouldn't have even stopped to look at that cloud. Mm -hmm. So it's about seeing and being inspired by what's really there right now, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm being all wistful and everything, but that's what Create Naturally, the book is about. And of course, it's beautifully um, produced because it's Schiffer. It's a hardcover with a beautiful bookmark and gorgeous images. And I know this is a weaving spinning community, but Kay Facet, maybe you know, he wrote the foreword for us. Wow. And I was so grateful for that. 
Yeah. I mean, I've gotten to know him a little bit in passing over the years, of course. And after he committed to write the foreword, I sent him some pottery to thank him. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And it's just been a real special, special experience all the way around. Mm -hmm. And I'm just so excited about it coming out. So now, though, my job, as you can imagine, is on the other side of being inside and telling people about about it. But I'm happy to talk about it all day long. Yeah. I just need to make sure I'm also talking about all the other books. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is putting on a very different hat because I'm not an expert in anything that we do. <laughs> I, my expertise is really in like helping other people say right. what they need to say. And it's right. a very different role from the people who are who are either, you know, making yarn, embroidering, you know, weaving, things right. like that. And then people who are teaching how to do that. It, it's a very different role being in a, being a publisher. It's helping other people kind of say what they need to say. Right. And I think giving, um, helping them define what is it, what's the real message here, mm-hmm. and then helping them say that, right? Yeah. I have two editors in the Schiffer team, and whoever takes on the development or developmental editor role for each title, that's mm-hmm. really one of the things they need mm-hmm. to do is work with the author to figure out how, you know, refine what they're trying to say and then say it in the best way with the most visually stunning images and also the best packaging, for lack of a better word, like mm-hmm. the best way to bring it into the world physically. Yeah. Um, And it is difficult because I think when you're teaching somebody in person, you get that kind of feedback. mm -hmm. And if you're, if you're putting together a book, you have to think there's a person who is hundreds of miles away, you know, thousands of miles away, Mm -hmm. months different, differently in time. How am I going to prepare this so that when they read it, they're going to get what I need them to get out of it? Yes. That's so true. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. But I do, I come from the magazine background, as you Mm -hmm. know. So Mm -hmm. the book Create Naturally, you know, honestly, it was like 15 magazine feature articles for Mm me. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Because that's what I know, how I know to communicate. And I like to read like that as well. Mm -hmm. Like I can get all these stories, almost like short stories, you know, so. Right. Yeah. You know, I was just thinking about what you said about, about the the natural world and the trees communicating. Mm -hmm. And one of our frequent contributors, uh, Judith McKenzie, Mm -hmm was working on a book with me once and she said, the forces that are at work in the world are at work in your yarn. Oh, I love that. And it's true. I mean, yes. <laughs> boy, the same physics that yes. makes the world go round also makes your yarn work. That's right. <laughs> so I think part of her point was wishing that it will be otherwise. You can't wish it to be different right. because the physics that is at work in the world. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. But that also kind of advocates a sort of, letting go and or a mm-hmm. realization of just mm-hmm. things things just are you yeah know? yeah uh, I think it's probably taken me a lot of years to sort of groove on that you know yeah. instead of the fighting the good fight or whatever and it's like <laughs> I don't really want my life to be about a fight you know yeah that's a good point <laughs> I'd rather it be about the connecting with uh-huh. people or or even better connecting people with what they love right or with each other you know you know it's funny because we're talking about connection but I also think an important thing about Fiber Out Now, Quilt Folk, Schiffer, Mm -hmm. and also something that's important to us at Long Thread Media is also independence. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the connection with the community, but also being able to kind of control our own destiny and decide what's important to us and have that kind of... um, Freedom. Freedom. Autonomy, yeah. 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 And I think making gives that to you. Uh Uh-huh. It's true. It it is. It's not a system that we have to follow. It's what we can we can do whatever we want. Yeah. I think of it kind of like making your own garden because your garden should be only exactly what you want. Mm-hmm. You know, you hope <laughs> <laughs> until the rabbits get it. Yeah. <laughs> you and the rabbit. That's it. The rabbits and the squirrels. That's yes. it. No, yeah, yeah. you rabbit squirrels. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, but really like building a garden. I always think I don't like, I have a, uh, not a large space, mm-hmm. um, but it's full of perennial beds and, It doesn't adhere to any one look and feel the way I think years ago, old Marsha or much younger Marsha, I should say, would have thought, well, what's the bigger plan? Is it going to be like a Japanese garden? Is it this and that? Now I just want it to be a Marsha garden. And Mm -hmm. I think all makers are like that. And Mm -hmm. it does give you freedom to explore almost anything. Plus, we haven't even talked about just the meditative quality. Yeah. I mean... Here at SOAR, uh, I've been able to share the marketplace with several other uh, vendors. And it's sure been interesting to watch, for example, watch them with a, a drop spindle. And just that magic moment when it's it thins out and spins on. 
And then even with the uh, spinning wheel and watching it pull like that, it's just magic, really. I do ceramics now and I've been, or I should say pottery, because ceramics sounds so much uh, next level. And really, I'm <laughs> not there. But um, over the pandemic, I was able to get a kiln room, set up a whole messy wheel throwing room. And it reminds me of that moment when you, the first, it's called the first pull, where you pull up the side of a vessel. And just like that, it pulls up and it's just that magic smooth shift. And I think with watching the spinners this week has made me think about that, that magic that happens. Mm -hmm. You know, I forget what the question was about this, but I just have left with that impression, you know, so strongly before mm -hmm. we leave this week. I'll be thinking about that a lot. Well, has anybody put a spindle in your hand and made you make yarn yet? <laughs> Not yet. We're no. falling down on the job. <laughs> um, but I always leave with something. And I was at HGA and I left with a bunch of yarn there. So I'll be making easy things, knitting mm -hmm. easy things, which um, are kind of my speed for knitting. And then I just purchased, um, and I can't make something with them, but I can admire them and relish them, which mm -hmm. is these hand-dyed cocoons, silk mm -hmm. cocoons. Yeah. So they're all, I bought two or three packages mm -hmm. from Trinway Silks, and they're these delicious jewel tones. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to put them right on the side table in my living room so I can just relish them all the time, you know? So. One of the things about the, the variety of different crafts is that often if you say, you know, I'm learning to knit. Somebody will say, oh, that's nice. You know, you, mm -hmm. there's a yarn store you can go to. Yeah. And, like, and if you say, I'm interested in learning to spin, somebody says, I have three spindles. Would you like a bag of fiber? Please oh, come right. over to my house. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Spinners tend to be a little bit evangelistic. Oh, it. sure. <laughs> so that's why I say, I'm surprised nobody's a spinner to do right. yet. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, they've been really busy. I have to say, what great <laughs> workshops. And people yeah. have just... I meet, get to meet up with people at the meals and then also when they come and visit us mm -hmm. in the booths. And they've all just enjoyed the workshops so much mm -hmm. and have been inspired by everything. And the thing is, once we're grownups, mm -hmm. which I think you and I now, we can call ourselves grownups. Yeah. <laughs> you don't get as many opportunities, one, to try new things and also to truly meet people who share your love of something. And yeah. this is truly, you know, in this case and in making in general is truly something that you love. And so mm -hmm. I think it's just a great opportunity, you know. Maggie Casey, who's teaching this this week, used to have a shop and has mm -hmm. taught thousands of people to spin over the years. And she had a student once who was a was a professional teacher. Was it, uh -huh. was it that was her day job? And I don't know whether it was continuing education or just something she felt mm -hmm. moved to do, but would go and take a class in something she didn't know anything about to remember what it was like oh, what a great to idea. not know what you were doing. Yeah. Because it's, you know, it's it's hard to go back to that mm -hmm. non-mastery level. I agree. I uh, was just talking about this too with someone the other night, which is the um, embracing the lousy. Mm, yes. You know, being ready to be really bad at something uh -huh. and just keep going anyway. Yeah. You know? There's something yeah. great about that too, you know, letting go. It is very, it's hard, you know, mm -hmm. when are you going to get to that point where you can, you know, it keeps falling apart. When is it going to turn into mm -hmm. yarn? You know, it's, when is it going to do this? And, mm -hmm. you know, some people find that it's better for them to, to be able to go back to it in the comfort of their home with a book. And some people find that mm -hmm. coming and taking classes in person or, or some combination of those is, mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Or going back to something that, you used to do and then trying again, like um, yeah. I use, I mean, I made quilts my whole life. I went through, mm -hmm. I, I've done all of the phases of the paper piecing to everything, mm -hmm. modern quilt, guild quilts, the art quilt, all of that. And I haven't done anything in years and years because mm -hmm. then once I started Fiber Art Now, it was all about, yeah. as you are doing, telling other people's stories, finding the right stories, visiting the studios, all mm -hmm. that, which was equally exciting, but yeah. just... A couple months ago, I joined my local library, had like a, uh, the Garden Club had an Art in Bloom show mm -hmm. and um, went back and made a quilt, a wall quilt for the first time in probably a decade, you know. Mm -hmm. And I realized one, well, as a confessional, I realized that now going back, everything wasn't perfect. But at this point, like it just didn't really matter to me so much anymore. Mm -hmm. So speaking of gardening and farming, 
I saw a really cool picture that Schiffer actually is on a on a book farm. It is. And, you know, I think not many people know that. And Mr. and Mrs. Schiffer, the parents of Pete Schiffer, who now runs the company, started Schiffer Books almost 50 years ago. Mm-hmm. We're getting ready to celebrate the 50-year anniversary. And it's located on a book farm deep in Amish country in Pennsylvania. Oh, cool. So it's a 40-acre acres of book goodness <laughs> and the little books pushing up out of the fields you have to go. <laughs> there actually is when you get our newsletter the i made sure that the top of it has a picture of the entry which is a big sign that looks like sacked books and it says book farm on it so <laughs> that's your <laughs> hook to join the newsletter and you can see that and there's a gorgeous sculpture garden with kinetic sculptures moving around and also moving around among the sculptures all day is our pet alpacas and oh. a one little pony and they all are as i understand rescue animals oh, wow. and um, pete schiffer and his wife got the opportunity to rescue them and knew that they had the space so can mm-hmm. you imagine the life that these alpacas and this horse lives just walking among sculptures all day <laughs> in this, <laughs> on this amish farmland <laughs> anyway so that's what the reality is as well as the inside of the company itself is loaded with handmade craft from all over the world, um, from his parents, Pete's travels and his parents' travels, and even the woodworking that he and his father did. And I'm sure Pete still does, but the meeting tables are all live edge tables, oh, cool. gorgeous. Yeah. It's really impacts your mindset when you go there and to work there. Um, I live in Massachusetts and I go about once a month, Mm -hmm. once every six weeks. And every time I go there, it resets me again. And I'm just, you know, remember exactly why we're here, you know? Okay. If this doesn't go anywhere, I'll just, I just won't use it. But so what made Schiffer decide to kind of carve out a space and make a commitment to having craft titles? So a couple of interesting developments happened in the past couple of years, even before I arrived. Uh, One of them was that Thrums Books, which was run, was started and run, as I'm sure you and most of the people who listen to this podcast know, by Linda Ligon, was absorbed into Schiffer. And that whole vibe of the the Thrums vibe is all about handcraft, of course, worldwide handcraft. And that, along with just the realization that so many of the Schiffer, overall Schiffer books, fit nicely into this maker space. Mm -hmm. And it really easily breaks off into its own identity. Mm -hmm. And so that's when Pete decided, Pete Schiffer decided, let's make Schiffer, Schiffer Craft its own imprint. Mm -hmm. And there are other imprints, too, within Schiffer. We have military, we have kids, Mm -hmm. mind, body, spirit, etc. And Schiffer Craft was just an obvious next step. Mm -hmm. Especially, I mean, now making is bigger than ever, Mm -hmm. right? And it deserves its own team and its own identity so that we can really explore that and Mm -hmm. go deep into the different niche areas where people are really looking for unique publications and wanting to follow and be a part of the unique authors and the things they have to teach us. Mm -hmm. It was really important to Linda to find a good home for Thrum's book. She worked on titles from Afghanistan to Morocco Mm -hmm. to Peru to Central America and you know, finding a place that would continue to steward the list that she had created. Mm -hmm. Because she, you know, Linda loves making books and Linda Mm -hmm. is not that excited right now about running a publishing company. (laughs) So finding a partner that Mm -hmm. would continue that was was important to her. So, Well, fortunately for Linda and for me, I don't run the publishing company either. So I get to... (laughs) Um, pursue, you know, finding the next exciting author and the next exciting technique that people are thrilled to learn more about and things that inspire them. And I must say, it's being here at SOAR is the longest time I've been able to spend with Linda because all of our conversations until now have been pretty fast or they've been with a group at a dinner or something like that. And and it's been such an inspiration to Mm -hmm. learn a little bit more about her backstory. Of course, I know generally. You yeah. know, I don't think Linda has ever actually been a guest on the podcast. Mm-hmm. She and I recorded something at the end of the first year. 
and, and and one of the things about being the podcast host is that if you think you sound like an idiot, you don't have to record re- release the episode. So <laughs> yeah. that one is <laughs> so that one's back. In, that's like my very first issue of Fiber Art. Now there you I, go. Don't ask me for that. <laughs> so I should sit down with her actually mm-hmm. because I think you know people get kind of snatches here and there. Yeah. Of, you know, Linda, but you know, hearing some of the stories about how she. You know, what the various things that she created and, and released into the world, mm-hmm. that's really kind of the, the, the trick. People would love that as well as peppering in some of her adventures. Yes. You know, I'm sure yeah. that would be great. I okay. think there's so much to tap there. Watch this space. Watch this space. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully now that we've talked it up, she'll definitely that's true. have to do that's it. That's true. So that's great. <laughs> I'm sure she'd be happy to, though. But I'll just turn up on her doorstep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, yeah. So Thrums joined. Um, we also have a partnership with something called Better Day Books. Mm-hmm. And that's really um, a more lighthearted look at creativity and inspiration. And so um, it's all just great, you mm-hmm. know, and um, Schiffer Craft. We want to be a worthy shipmate mm-hmm. for all of our makers. Yeah. And we're committed to that. So. Yeah. so I know that your book is coming out and Karen's book is coming yes. out. What else is next for Schiffer Craft? Uh, right now we have 15 or 20 books, new books, um, twice a year. Mm-hmm. That's so a lot of books. That's a lot of books. And we go across the mediums. And we plan out a couple of seasons ahead, obviously, as you can imagine, at least a year and a half or so. With so many new things happening, and we're exploring, diving deeper into all our areas, weaving, spinning, I mean, all across the fibers. We also have interesting titles coming from of course across other mediums that are unrelated but equally interesting um, and exciting i would encourage people to join us on facebook join us on instagram we're still social media babies people we just started (laughs) fresh can you imagine starting fresh Mm -hmm. so it's very exciting and we have an enthusiastic team that's sharing a lot of fun things everything Mm -hmm. we do so in the interest of shameless self-promotion i hope you'll (laughs) forgive me join us on instagram and facebook and visit the site if you're up for getting some news once or twice a month we have a fun short e-newsletter and i'm looking forward to all the future happenings thank you so much for joining us absolutely it's been such a pleasure and such a pleasure to be here at soar thank you Anne. thanks to trainway silks and handweaving.net for sponsoring this episode thank you for listening to the long thread podcast if you've enjoyed this episode please rate the show and leave us a comment on apple podcasts or your favorite podcast platform Thanks again.